everybody. November. <laughs> oh, time is going by so fast. And, um, but um, there are those of you that um, you've said to me, you know, you keep, you know, Dorothy, you keep mentioning praying in the spirit and praying in tongues and uh, in the classes that you teach, but I've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so will you teach on that so I can receive it? And uh, so <clears throat> that's what we're going to do today. And I have split this class into part one and part two. Um, it's too long to put it all into one. And so um, I've done that, split it into two. And um, so let's just, let's get started. And uh, let's just, just open in prayer first. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit that you have sent to us when your son Jesus returned back to heaven after the finished work of the cross. And God, we just thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the work of the Spirit of God in our lives. Thank you for that precious baptism of the Holy Spirit that you made available as a free gift to each person who surrenders their life to Jesus. And so, God, I just thank you. We thank you for all that comes with that, too, in Jesus' name. And so today I acknowledge, I acknowledge again today that, God, it is your anointing that does the teaching, that I am just the voice. And, Lord God, so I yield to you. And I ask you to speak through my voice, think through my mind, and reach every heart, transform and teach what needs to be taught to each person, what you want them to know, what you want them to understand. And so I just, as your word goes forth, may the fullness of your purpose prevail in each heart and life of, the, uh, of every hearer today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. All right, so I heard, I heard this conversation that, um, about this conversation that God had had with this mighty servant of his, and it went like this. So God said to this, to this man, he said, you know that it's possible for a human being to fill, be filled with an angel, right? Because that's what de demonic possession is, okay? It's Satan, a fallen angel, you know, entering somebody and taking them over, Okay. And then he went on to tell this man, he says, but I didn't fill you with an angel. Right? I wouldn't trust you to anyone but me. So I filled you with myself. Right? My own power is on the inside of you. Okay. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the spirit of God himself. Okay. God's own spirit dwelling with you and being in you. John 14, 17 says, filled with him, Acts 2, 4 says. Him coming on you, okay, along with the receiving of power because of it, Acts 1, 8. Okay, so with you, in you, on you, filling you. Why? Because you are so important to him that he wouldn't trust you to anybody but himself, so he fills you with himself, all right? So you understanding your worth to God, how absolutely precious that you are to him, right? So now the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is so key, always has been, right, to the living of the um, powerful, victorious life God intended for you, no matter what's going on on the planet, because he's just that good and you are absolutely precious to him now the baptism though is not a deal breaker for salvation let me be clear about that it is not a deal breaker for salvation right not having it will not keep you out of heaven in fact you can choose to go your whole life without it <laughs> why you would want to right? that's another story but it's like going through life trying to um, build a city with a hammer and nails and a handsaw Right? When you can have all the heavy equipment and the power tools instead, right? It's not sin, but it sure is mighty inconvenient, right? Especially in this hour in which we live. We need the power tools. Amen? What's going on on the planet right now is a spiritual battle to a scale like we have never before seen, right? Evil, horrible, demonically inspired evil. It's not even trying to hide or camouflage anymore, right? It's not even trying to make sense. Doesn't seem to need to. Okay, one mission, to steal from people, to kill, 
and to destroy their lives by any means necessary, right? Satan doesn't care how it gets done or how many lies have to be told to accomplish it, okay? And Satan has enlisted the help of man to do it, okay? Evil men employed by him. And, and then weak men letting it happen, okay? And much of the church sitting on their hands just calling it something else, okay? Lying and deception on a scale so big, so widespread, so normal that good is now bad and, and you know, bad is now good. Lies now truth, right? The, the bad guy is now the good guy. The good guy is the bad guy. And much of the church is calling it that way too, okay? So that sometimes the things that are going on can be so confusing, right? An overwhelming ball of mess, right? It's like when my guys go fishing, right? Sometimes that fishing line gets into a ball that you just have to cut the line, right? Bird's nest, they call it, right? There's no way to untangle that whole mess, right? You've got to cut the line, okay? So tell me, why, why would you want to try and navigate through all that without everything that God provided in the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Why? Many are trying. Now, they're not doing a hot job of it, right? But why go without provided the, the provided help? Okay, when some days on your own, it's hard to even tell what end is even up, right? What to believe, what not to believe, and how on earth to pray about it all in a way that gets stuff done at least, right? Stuff changed, okay? But powerless prayers are of zero use. There's no, you know, pretending like you've got the goods and just getting by. Not anymore, right? But so much is just gone, going bad, so fast before your eyes you know what to pray for anymore right you feel the urgency in, in this this intensity on the inside of you that god's intervention is needed but you're at a loss on how to pray what needs praying because everything is such a, a big tangled messed up ball of fishing line that you don't even know where to begin you need super supernatural help even to do that and that's what tongues is for that's what praying in tongues is for when you don't know what to pray for as you ought romans 8 26 then in comes the holy spirit to make intercession for you as you pray in tongues and believe me he knows exactly what is what and what needs to be prayed when and how and to get it done too <laughs> right okay so one day the disciples had some questions for Jesus and they were concerned about and wanted to know how they could know when the end was, when things were wrapping up, what signs should they look for? And Jesus tells them one thing, take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, 4. Of all the things Jesus could have listed, he said this one, take heed that no man deceive you. Okay, that, was there, that means there was going to be deception by man. And it would be on such a scale and of such seriousness that Jesus made certain that the warning made it into the pages of Scripture so long ago for us now. God knew it would be that way. And he set it up so long ago such that his children could receive this powerful gift that he had for them that would, number one, ensure they could absolutely know truth from lie and every time too. Okay? And number two, ensure that it would ensure that they could, knew, they could know anything at all that they needed to know from the tiniest seemingly incon inconsequential thing to the, you know, the, the big game changers. Okay? And what to do about them. Okay, number three, that they would ensure that they would pray exactly the right things at the right time and see the supernatural, only God, change come, right? And the devil and wicked men driven out. Okay, so praying in tongues would allow us to find out what God wants us to know about what's going on in our nation and what to pray about it, what to say about it. Okay, like God, God, what is it? that we don't see that you want us to see. And what do you want us to know about it? What do you say we're to set in order on the planet the way it should be in this nation and on this planet? All right, and that gift is the gift of the Holy Ghost with tongues being the precious initial evidence of having received him. 
okay? And that gift, if you will block out the other voices screaming from every direction, if you will block out the other voices screaming from every direction, fill yourself with the word of God. Shut out the lying media. Humble yourself. Repent of any pride and get to the business of taking time to get before God and pray in the spirit, pray in tongues. You will also find out that despite all the yuck going on, you're going to find out about God's chapter. Oh, yeah, and it's begun already, right? It's in progress right now. It's underway, and God's chapter is going to upend all the devil's hard and fast work. God's not going to put up with the wickedness of man. The pages of scripture are full of God showing us that. He's not going to put up with the wickedness of man. In fact, evil men's end has already been determined. And please hear me. Now, if you're listening to this and you're one of those, you have you know, abused your position of authority and influence and, and, and decision-making power in this great nation of Canada and you know you have? Or you've looked, at the, you've looked the other way while it was happening, turned a blind eye to it, or cooperated with it in your own um, self-preservation or advancement, okay? It, it, keeping that in mind. It is not too late. You can change your mind. Ask God to forgive you, and you can stand up now for what you know to be good and right. Right now, nobody said it was going to be easy, but you, if you'll make the choice, heaven will back you. And with God on your side, no one, no one can succeed as your enemy. Okay, but the problem is, is when you're working against God, that's where there's a problem for you. Okay, but you can repent of that and get God working and helping you to do what's good and right. All right? But know this, because God's knockout punch is coming, right? You watch. I have it on good authority that there's coming reversals and removals. Wicked men are going to be overthrown for their wickedness, and God is going to pull the plug on the evil that has been ruling this nation and other nations of the world. Okay? But child of God, okay? You who are saved by the blood of Jesus, look at me. Look at me. You can't just go laying down, covering your ears, and waiting for Jesus to return and snatch you out of here. Well, Dorothy, it's all just downhill from here. Nonsense. That is a lie. Child of God, get up. Get your act together. Snap that backbone of yours into place, and let's do something for God in this hour. Let's cooperate with him. Okay, I assure you that's the least we owe him. The best days are ahead of us yet. All right? No, it will never go back to normal. Right? No sense in wishing for that. Even what God is getting ready to roll out in its fullness and how he's getting to do it, that he's getting ready to do it, is not going to be normal either. Right? Nothing normal as we head down this final stretch. So never mind wishing for normal. Okay? But just think precious child of God, you were chosen by God to live in this hour. Not everyone gets this privilege, and it is a privilege, right? And you've got everything available to you that you need to do it if you cooperate with God and make sure that his word is first place in your life. Okay, and one of those things that he has given us is this powerful, powerful gift of the Holy Spirit. And oh, it makes the devil sweat, right? Just thinking about you getting a hold of it and then going on to actually use it like God intended. And we're going to learn how to use it all right. And all that part, right, that just puts Satan into a fit of fear, okay? So let's get started. Let's not take my word for it, right, about God's gift of the Holy Spirit in tongues, but let's see it in Scripture, all right? So in these next two sessions, I'm, not, I'm, I'm only going to deal with tongues for personal use, Okay, there are tongues used as a gift to the body of Christ for ministry use too, right? Tongues, interpretation of tongues, etc., to be used in the church and all that. Okay, one's appointed and assigned by God to, to specifically operate in those things. It's the more um, public side, if you will, side of tongues. Okay, like for example, in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, um, where, where um, Paul says, are all apostles? Are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, 
Okay, some people have mistaken that as that, well, then maybe must not everybody speaks in tongues. That's not what we're talking the public side, okay, of, um, of speaking in tongues. But it goes on to say, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, variety of tongues, okay, and so on that that portion of scripture goes but mark 16 says this and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues okay that's what i'm going to be dealing with today the baptism in the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues for your personal use your personal prayer language okay and that is for every believer all right. As you can see in both 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12 and Mark 16, tongues is both a supernatural way to communicate with God, but also a supernatural way to minister to other people. Okay. But today we're not going to deal with a public ministry-ish side to it. Okay. All right. At salvation, a very important ministry of the Holy Spirit just automatically took place in your life. Okay. But that ministry is different from the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, two different things. The moment you made Jesus the Lord of your life, spiritual death was removed from your spirit and there was born in you a new life, a new spirit. Okay, you came out of sin and death, were made free from it, and you entered into life. Okay, Romans 8, 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's what automatically happened in that moment. You were literally born again, born of God this time. And as a result, you are now his child, born into his family. Okay, 1 John 5, 1, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God, okay? Now understand though, that without the Holy Spirit, you can't be born again to begin with. Okay, the Holy Spirit has a very important part in this. Romans 8, 9 says, but you are not of the flesh, but no, sorry, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Okay, Amplified says it this way, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. Okay, so after you became a new creation, however, it is God's will that something else happen as well. Okay, it's God's will that you be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Okay, so when you became born again, born of the Spirit, this born again spirit of yours became capable of containing the almighty power of the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, are you understanding me? It's when we're filled with the spirit of God. That's when the power comes. The power of the kingdom comes to know how to operate with the resources of the kingdom, the might and the strength of the kingdom. That there's something more than just the born again experience. Okay, so speaking in tongues is an outward manifestation of a uh, powerful inward force. So speaking in tongues crosses over to a higher dimension. It is direct contact with God, direct communication with God. When you pray in tongues, you are partnering with God and his thoughts and plans. Okay. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> you begin to walk in the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit on a 24 hour basis. Okay. And tongues is the initial evidence of that Holy Spirit's baptism. Okay. In Galatians three, we see the more that God intended for us once we had received Jesus and received the work he did at the cross for us. Okay, we see that um, verses 13, 14 of Galatians 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, and then Acts 1 4, Jesus tells them to wait for the promise of the Father. He says, You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, notice you receive that promised Spirit through faith. 
Galatians 3.14 says. Okay, it has to be through faith because you won't be able to understand what it's all about first before you receive it. It's a spiritual thing. And you need the Spirit of God working in you to understand the things of the Spirit. Okay, you'll need to have faith and believe God before you even understand it. Okay, you receive it and then you will be able to understand it. Okay, big mistake to want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit to wait to receive it until you understand it first. You won't. You can't. Not until after you've received it will you then have the capacity to understand it. Okay, am I making sense? Okay, there is this teaching out there today that tongues does not necessarily have to come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that is simply not scriptural. And it is extremely advantageous to the devil that you buy into that lie, right? Tongues is this powerful weapon that Satan has nothing in his arsenal to combat. He has got to get you to lay it down and not use it or he's in big trouble. So, of course, he would perpetuate that lie, right? But there, and there yes, we understand there are many evidences of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Okay, but we're talking about the first evidence or the beginning evidence. Okay, so you're ready with your Bibles because we're going to put light to that lie right there and blow it. <laughs> blow it right out of your believing. All right. Okay, so Jesus tells the disciples. Uh, he tells them ahead that the Holy Spirit's going to be sent. And that when he was, he would, when he came, he would testify when he came in. Okay, and they expected that evidence. Okay, and so this is what Jesus tells them, John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. In the next chapter, John 15, verse 26, but the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor. When the helper, comforter, advocate, advocate, intercessor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. He will testify and bear witness about me. Testify. To give testimony. To utter testimony. Okay, testimony. Meaning to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something. Right? You know testimony. Evidence of it. Okay? Then Acts 1, 4, 5, and 8. And being assembled together with them, he, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Okay, the one, that promise he had just talked to them about in John 15, 26, the verse we just read. Okay, and it goes on to say, which he, Jesus said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And he goes on to tell them, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay. And then he arrived. Okay. And so the Holy Spirit arrived. And when the, the scripture says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, then over to verse four, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so this is a separate experience that the Father desires for you. Okay, and it happened again in the 10th chapter of Acts from um, when um, it happens, this whole thing happens again in the 10th chapter of Acts, but this time the, the Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now watch this, because the Jews couldn't deny it. Here the Gentiles had also received the Holy Spirit. And how did they know? How could they tell? What was the proof or the evidence making it impossible to explain away how, how Gentiles would have access to this too? Because they heard them speak with other tongues. Okay, watch Acts 10, 44 to 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision, the Jews, who believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit been, had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. God would not have written that in there if that is not exactly what he meant. The evidence of having received the gift of the Holy Spirit speaking with other tongues. 
Okay, now watch this. We see it brought out again with Peter just one chapter later. And remember, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Okay, we're seeing it again. And this is Acts 11, 13, or 15 to 17. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? Now, if, do you follow that? Do you hear what? It, do you hear that part of the scripture says, as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Okay. Now, just exactly how did the Holy Ghost fall on them in the beginning? <laughs> with the speaking in other tongues. Okay, watch it happen again, this time with Philip, Acts 8, 6 to 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed, and the lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Okay, so... People were seeing all the miracles and the deliverances taking place. Okay, and among them, seeing all this was a man named Simon. Okay, let's go on to verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city. Okay, then verse 13. Verse 13 tells us then that Simon also then believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And the Bible says he was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Okay, so Simon was amazed at the miracles and the signs that were done. Okay, now verse 14. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had not fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, then they laid, meaning water baptized, when they had, then they laid their hand on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Okay, now watch this. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered the money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Are you seeing this? So here Simon had seen all the miracles done. We read that earlier. Deliverances, lame were healed. He saw all that and had been amazed. So amazed that he believes and he's baptized in water, but he didn't offer the money for that though. It was this other thing. Okay. He'd seen some amazing things, but when then he saw something else, he watched as people receive the Holy Spirit. But what did he see? What was the evidence that proved something had happened and the Holy Spirit had indeed come? So much so that he was interested in being able to do that himself. What was the evidence? The very same evidence in Acts 2, Acts 10, Acts 11. They spoke with other tongues. All right. And Peter had to address Simon and correct him. And so he says to Simon, he says, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God, verse 21. And he tells him to repent. Okay. But now watch how this is said in the original Greek here. Okay. Those words in this matter, in the Greek reads in this manner of speaking. So let me read this again. When, Paul, when he says to him, you have, he says to Simon, you have neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. The Greek reads it this way. You have neither part nor lot in this manner of speaking. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. Okay, so we also understand something. You need your heart right if you're going to want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, I'm just going to add that in there. But he's saying, he's saying that you would actually, he's saying to Simon, that you would actually think that you could buy this manner of speaking, this bold, authoritative language of the Spirit. Are you seeing this? Okay, so now, the te- there is also teaching out there. So we, there we saw clearly, we see over and over again the um, Speaking in tongues comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We saw it over and over again in Scripture. Now, there is teaching out there today that tongues do not necessarily come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that is simply not 
scriptural. Again, there are many evidences of the Holy Spirit in a person's life, yes, but speaking in tongues is the first evidence. Evidence that the Holy Spirit has been received and come upon a person, causing them to receive power, just like Jesus told them it would be. Okay, this is complicated, right? But even religion, for all of its own reasons, wants to alter it. Right, Satan's seen to it. Why? Because he does not want you speaking in tongues. That ability, that precious ability to have the, the, the very spirit of God do the praying through you, something the devil can't touch or interfere with, something he can't even get your flesh to mess up with, makes his job so much harder and near impossible if people will grab hold of the gift God provided and use it. Okay, why? Why is the baptism of the Holy Spirit so key? Why is speaking in tongues so crucial? We're getting to all that, okay? But right off the hopper is this, because God said so, <laughs> right? And when you say different than he says, you're wrong, okay? The word of God tells us that when we are filled with the Spirit, we do speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives us utterance or gives us the words, Okay, Acts 2, 4 again. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, but Dorothy, why must I speak in tongues? Because if God says every believer ought to speak in tongues, then every believer ought to speak in tongues. Right? This isn't complicated. I'm not going to argue with God, are you? Right? And he did say that, you know, Mark 16, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe them that believe meaning all who believe all believers notice god didn't say in these signs shall follow some who believe no he said these signs shall follow them that believe meaning all of them all right so what do we make and junk up for why do we use that well i just don't think it's for every christian as an excuse for why we didn't bother receiving what god provided why do you think that we somehow know more than god these signs shall follow them that believe. And watch what one of the signs are. They shall speak with new tongues. Who shall? They. The believers. All the them that believe. Christians, right? We've just got to read right? and not make stuff up. Okay? So let's go back to Acts 2-4 again for a minute. And they were all filled and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All. All who were there. Okay, so that should forever put to rest that totally unscriptural belief that maybe that's for some but just not for everybody. Toss that lie. Okay, because it's a lie. No, sir. Because if that's what God meant to be the case, he would have put it in there. He would have made that clear by leaving somebody out. Right? Especially in the very first account of it happening. But no, all were filled. All spoke with other tongues. Not a single person left out. It is available to every believer. Okay? Acts 19, 2-6. He, Paul, said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Well, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Well, unto John's baptism. Then Paul then said Paul, John truly baptized in the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. But when they heard, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Paul had laid his hand, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Right? So again, for something to be scriptural, there's got to be scriptures about it, right? And we have just read scripture after scripture after scripture about it, all right? God has repeated himself, okay? When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you receive a gift from God, the gift of speaking in tongues, and it is a gift. Acts 2.38 says so, and Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, okay? And it is a powerful gift, that every believer should desire. Why? Because God said so. We covered that, right? 
Okay, but one more thing, Dorothy. One more thing. I have the Holy Spirit, and I do this thing um, that where I groan from deep inside me. But I don't pray in tongues, though. Okay, and this is a thing. It's a thing because I've had people ask me this. Okay, this isn't the first I've heard, and I've had people ask me this, and this may be, um, you know, apply to somebody listening today as well. So I'm going to include this example, trusting it's going to be help to you too. Okay, so yes. My personal experience has also been to have this groaning from within involved at times too, when in prayer, okay, and, when, and while praying in the spirit, for sure, okay? In fact, Romans 8, 26, 27 tells us that happens too, okay? He says, likewise, the spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, which cannot be expressed in words, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay? Scripture's clear on that. But then in Acts 2 verse 4, we're told, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance or expression in words. So do you see? In both spots, we see both. Prayer with a groaning by the Spirit within us, with no expression of words. And prayer by the Spirit within us, with expression in words, tongues. Okay, we see them both. But now understand, all throughout Scripture, we see over and over and over that prayer is done with words. Okay, there can be groanings involved as well, yes. Okay, but in prayer, we do things like we ask, we declare, we, we, we repeat what God has said about a thing. We confess, we repent we um, break agreement okay we come into agreement we praise we give thanks we, we pray in an unknown tongue all that is done with words it can be loud or it can be very quiet under one's breath or even a thought to the lord at time but it's all the uh, times but it's all done with words okay even the occasions when you pray something to the lord silently straight from your heart to him but even still then it requires words right words in thought but words just the same Okay. Most often, though, it is done with your mouth, your tongue. Okay, so no different than with tongues. That's why it's called tongues after all, right? Speaking in tongues. All right, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14, 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. So according to God, my spirit is praying when I'm praying in an unknown tongue. tongues. That's how God set it up. Okay? And it goes on to say, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? If I pray with the Spirit and I pray with the understanding also, I will sing in the Spirit and I will sing, in the, sing with the understanding also. So God has set it up such that my Spirit prays through the use of an unknown tongue. That's how my Spirit, joined to the Holy Spirit, prays, bypassing my understanding. Okay, remember God's system throughout the word for prayer and for getting things done on the planet. It always involves words, words spoken from our mouths. Okay, whether words or whether the words are ones coming from our mouths that our natural understanding understands or words coming from our mouths that our spirit prays while our natural understanding does not understand. But either way, things get done by words coming from our mouths. That is key. Okay, Mark 16, 15 to 18. And he, Jesus, said unto him, said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Okay, so do you see that according to Jesus, tongues involves speaking in that verse? Okay, so now watch this. Back to Romans 8, 26. In the Greek, that verse literally reads, The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us which, with groanings which cannot be uttered in articulate speech. Okay, articulate speech. Articulate speech means your ordinary kind of speech. So according to the Greek, praying in the spirit includes both groaning and other tongues spoken. Okay, 
The Spirit of God does not groan, though, or speak in tongues apart from you. You do the talking. He gives the utterance. He will make intercession for you according to the will of God, but you give it the voice. It is spirit-directed praying. Okay, and Jesus said, he's your helper. Remember, John 14, 16, a helper helps, right? We know how this works, but a helper, right? A helper by definition means there's another doing their part and a helper comes in to assist what's already being done. The Holy Spirit does not do all this apart from you. He's your helper. You have a part. He helps. He has been sent to help you get the job done that you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so don't let the devil get you to settle for something else. And of course, he'd like to convince Christians to not use their mouths, their words spoken in tongues while in prayer. Oh, it would benefit him immensely, right? If God's people would just quit that, right? If he has to put up with the believer, you know, even if he has to put up with the believer, you know, having the weapon. But if at least he can ensure the, the, the believer doesn't really use it the way it was intended, right? He can get somewhere, okay? All right. The Spirit's baptism. What's the big deal about it? Okay. Number one, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is important to a Christian because of the many ways in which the Spirit of God enables you to be victorious. Again, he was sent to help you, to empower you, to give you the power tools you would need. All right. God has literally thought of everything, right? To help our lives, to be able to be lived victoriously every day, every day, never defeated above only and not beneath the head and not the tail, right? Receiving the Holy Spirit is vital to the believer being fully equipped to fulfill his purpose and destiny in God. Okay. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is actually the fullness of the earthly ministry of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now follow me. Jesus had an earthly ministry too, remember, right? But he's returned to heaven now. And remember, he said he had to go so that the Holy Spirit could come. Okay, but now understand something. The Holy Spirit is not God's second best. It's not like, oh, well, Jesus left to head back to heaven. Guess now we get the B team. The Holy Spirit is not God's B team. In fact, things always progress in God. God is never only increasing. You know that, right? He's never going backwards. He's never decreasing. We know that Isaiah 9, 7, right? Two or three witnesses, Isaiah 9, 7 of the increase of his government and peace. There will be no end. Increase does not end with him. Psalm 115, 14, the Lord will increase you more and more, you and your children only increase with God. May the Lord, the God of your ancestors, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he promised, Deuteronomy 1.11. So when Jesus left, and that's three witnesses, when Jesus left and the Holy Spirit was sent, increase had just happened. It just got better for us. This was no B team, right? When God sent the Holy Spirit, he sent one that would be able to do things that Jesus himself, here in the flesh, could never do. Even Jesus himself said that. He told them John 16 verse 7 in the Amplified, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. <laughs> For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship with you. Okay? John 14, 16, and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Do you hear that? Another helper means another of the same. Another helper. And this one, okay, goes on to say, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth that the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Okay. Jesus could not do that in person on the earth. Okay. Jesus had to leave the earth so that God's spirit could be in them, in the disciples, in the people of God. That could not be the case otherwise. Okay. Now the Holy Spirit, now it was the Holy Spirit's turn to be up to bat, so to speak, right? The baton had been passed to him. It was now time for the Holy Spirit to fulfill his earthly ministry. 
Okay, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the fullness of that ministry. So for us now, you and I, to be fully empowered, we need to let the Spirit of God have his place in our lives in order to walk out and to complete our earthly ministries, <clears throat> our earthly assignments. Okay, I love this quote. Without him, without the Holy Spirit and his baptism, we are shallow in our ability to do all God purposed for us to do. We need that baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, Dorothy, yes, I see. I'm seeing what you're showing me in scripture, but there's this other thing. I don't want to be asking for the Holy Spirit and risk opening myself up to getting the wrong spirit. I mean, what if it's Satan giving me these, these tongues? No, no, and no. Okay, watch how clear Jesus is about this in Luke 11. He says this, and I say unto you, ask me, ask me, and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks me receives. He that seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Okay, Jesus is saying, I'm going to make sure you get what you're asking me for. Right? Is he lying? No. Exaggerate? No. And he goes on to say, if a son ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will he, give, he, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for eggs, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil compared to me, Jesus is saying, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke 11, 9 to 13, right? You, he's saying, you wouldn't do that to your kids. Why would I do that to mine or let that happen to mine? And you're not even good like I'm good, right? And watch this, Mark 16, 17. So Jesus tells us to, he tells us to do this. He says, cast the devil out and speak with other tongues. Okay, so watch this. And these signs will follow those who believe. We're talking about believers again. In my name, they will cast out demons. And they will speak with new tongues. And then the list goes on to what else they will do. Okay, but look here. Speaking with tongues has got nothing to do with the devil at all. He's not even to be around. He's to be gone. Stand on his way by you. They will cast out demons. God didn't tell you to go and get in a devil and then go get a devil and then speak with other tongues. No, he told you to get rid of any that might be around and then get on with the business of speaking with new tongues and being safe from, you know, going on to be safe from snakes and deadly things, healing the sick, all of that. Okay, so don't let the devil lie to you and bully you out of a precious, necessary gift that God has freely offered to you. One that makes the devil's life miserable and yours victorious, right? And a whole lot more fun. All right, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, most productive use of time ever. Amen. All right, we're going to stop here and we're going to pick up again part two of this class. Okay, but we're going to we're going to continue seeing from God's word what the big deal is about speaking in tongues, praying in tongues and what all is accomplished through it. And then we're going to show you how to do that, how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. All right. Alrighty, love you guys, and we will see you again in part two.